<laughs> what if Willem Dafoe just pops out from behind a cactus? <laughs> <laughs> And, ha and is using the Willem Dafoe voice that Andrew Right, made. that Andrew, right. I don't even want to try it because I think it would be, it would be, uh, you know, a disservice to him, to Andrew. When is that, uh... Ellen Page? I don't think B-Boy likes anyone. I'm starting to think. Yeah. I like short hair Ellen Page. I think it's a good look. <laughs> only short hair Ellen Page. That's the only Ellen Page you're into, though. <laughs> Any other Ellen Page, get the fuck out. Yeah. When is that uh, 12 hour judgment Dre going down? We don't I, know now. I think it's going to be a while now because Andrew's uh, headed home for the holidays. Mm, same. He's, so am I. So it's yeah. going to be I think, weeks. I think he's gone until, very, until New uh, Year's. So. Yeah. It'll be post New Year's now, for sure. Oh, Phil, there's another crop of uh, Ludum Dare games coming up soon. Oh, yeah. I, I What's going on right now? We should, uh, we should definitely do something with that. Oh, it's done. It's done. Yeah, it's Are they done? It was last weekend. Oh, yep. cool. Um, was you, so the theme was you only get one. Yeah. Yeah. So I had a really good idea, but I was super sick, so I just couldn't. I couldn't. Yeah. It was a shame. Don't, don't say it right now, because one of these jerks will steal it. I'd be fine with that. Uh, I'm oh no, there's a cool that. game to play. Yeah. And by one of these jerks, I mean Minicore Studios. <laughs> there's a lot of... I, I've only sort of glanced at the games, but there's a lot of, like... I don't know. I went through and voted on a lot of the themes, because they did the theme voting in, like, five rounds. And there were some really cool things in there, and then the final round felt like all the most boring ones. Yeah. I was kind of disappointed. I think the what most interesting of the most boring ones got picked, but... <laughs> <laughs> what was that big glowing symbol on the ground? I don't know. It was just a symbol, I guess. Now I found some stuff. Oh, that's where treasures. you get. That's you a skull. Get, that's a right, skull and a collect, necklace, maybe? You have to collect those seven necklaces, and those will unlock the secret ancient assassin robes for you to wear. Mm -hmm. Oh, rat. <sighs> yeah, I'll do that. What the hell? You should finish that game. Please don't put on the mask. No, put it on. Uh, don't do that, dude. Masks make everything better. Uh. Yeah, steal that. That seems like a good idea. Yeah, no. If I've learned anything already... from pop culture, it's that Native Americans like having their gravesites disturbed. Especially when there's already fucking sand monsters and Native American ghost warriors just around. No, just take their stuff. That's fine. Cool. Oh. oh, this is uh. Yep. Thanks, Aiden. What is? All... We're just digging up a bunch of shit now. Yep. Got piece it together and make your ancient um, armor. This doesn't seem cool. Is this gonna make the like? <sighs> My Phil, ghost is logic is that. No, Sorry. nothing's happening. Right. Uh, this is a cutscene. My ghost logic is that taking their magic medallions will mean they can't do their second ghost warrior Polo shit anymore, says, now right? Phil, press o, <laughs> press o to piss on their graves. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, O? Oh. Fox says, if you put, in the, put on the mask, this turns into Splatterhouse. <laughs> that was the story of Splatterhouse. It's accurate. Was it really? Yeah. It's a I crazy didn't know that. haunted mask. Have I wasn't allowed to play Splatterhouse. Scatterhouse is a completely different game. Scatterhouse. The worst. Um, uh, oh, she's gonna put on that mask. Oh boy. Rastraz says she needs to get all the stones to get the master sword. Then she can be the ghost. The desert ghost. She put it around the baby. Fifth talisman. God, this. Is... Wait, this, hasn't this she been wearing a necklace through this, this whole game? This game has taken a real turn towards the dumb, <laughs> in a real David Cagey way. Mm-hmm. And hasn't... that baby was Connor. <laughs> hasn't Ellen Page been wearing a necklace through this whole game? I don't know. She's had a bunch of costume changes. Yeah, but I think she's been wearing the same necklace every time. I don't think so. This one? I don't know. I oh, think not, she not, just not that. Just one. this one out of 
Just... Yeah, that one's okay. Because I was thinking maybe the baby is Ellen Page. I, I think that baby is from that... a long time ago. Yeah, I think it's an old timey baby. baby. Yeah, that baby would be like 150 by now at least. Well, maybe she's in more. The baby's the grandma. I mean, that's oh, nice. good call. Maybe. Yeah, that I can I... see. And the only way to quell the uh, raging sand monster is to kill Grandma. Yep. I hope that there is a scene where I get to, as the ghost, choke out Grandma. Kavanaugh <laughs> 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 says uh, David Cage should just get writers that are not himself. Yes. Yeah, we've talked about this. I think that's something, or at the very least, like... Uh, co-writers, editors, people who are willing to, you know, stand up to him and be like, hey, maybe this isn't a good idea because this is a good idea, but this makes this less good. Yeah. Oh no! Oh, uh, that guy's just... Oh. What? Yeah, see? Don't take the magic corpse jewelry. What did I tell you? <laughs> no, this is just... This Fucking is Ellen Page. Listen, she thought it would look really nice as a, as a Halloween costume. So we're totally respectful. She's gonna totally get a headdress. <laughs> do some sugar skull makeup. She just thinks it's so pretty. <laughs> Thomas notes that the white girl knows more about Native American mysticism than the shamans did. <laughs> no one's called them shamans yet, right? We have. Like in the game, though. I just did. Great. This is gonna be like that scene in Evil Dead. Oh, it's the yeah, okay, look at his her, and there's look on her neck. Oh. Right on her neck. Yeah. Like her mother before. She was Alan Page just did some mouth things in that last shot that were hilarious. Hashtag Ellen Page mouth things. Yeah. <laughs> is she just always holding that? Mm -hmm. Yes. It's the only thing that keeps us safe and alive. So I'm, I'm giving it to you. Her skin didn't grow around it then. <laughs> yeah. So okay. Welcome, so now what? Now you have beats. five. I just now what? Say hello to Quality Beats for joining us. Hey, Quality Beats. <laughs> hey, Quality Beats. Hello. Quality Beats. Welcome to the diversity center. Put that Kool-Aid juice in your mouth. Kool-Aid smoke. <laughs> Kool-Aid fog. <laughs> Every few minutes now, B Boy Zilla has B Boy Zilla has been dropping like Kool Aid jokes, and he doesn't uh, stop. Lucky Good. Dingo says, "Plot twist: You made that grandma talk. Never would have guessed that was what was gonna happen." Yeah. I mean, is this the Blair Witch? Mm -hmm. What's no, it's a big frowning face. You guys like Blair Witch? What are your thoughts? Should we play that Bizarre Witch game? Which one? Which one? There There's two. three. What? Oh my God! There were three. All there were like three. A, like in that set. one selection. Yeah. They're, they're bad. Okay, what so they I summoned it. So they summoned the thing. They had a condenser it, of their own. Yeah. They summoned Yatsuhir. They oh, so it was their fault? Full of hatred for the white man. Oh. It was their fault because they wanted Because they the hated the yeah. white people. Yeah. Jesus Christ. They hated game. white people, so they summoned an evil thing. Wow. And that's their Great. fault. And now the white <laughs> person's here to save them. Dear David Cage, suck a dick. <laughs> no time. Oh. Oh. Great. Fuming right now. <laughs> I would really enjoy a game about Native American mythology that was done correctly. Yeah. I agree with that. It's such a minefield, man. It's uh, such I, a. Like, particularly it's if so it was a game tough. done, like, yes. with actual. Like, with yes. developers who are actual Native Americans who mm -hmm. really uh, can dig into it and yeah. approach it from that that perspective, I think that could be really interesting. And and without publishers pressuring them to make it marketable and and pushing them to lean into stereotypes. Like. B Boy says, "Shout outs to natives being the enemy." <laughs> Shout outs. <laughs> yup. Yup. Act One so. says, "Holy shit! It's Bioshock Infinite's message all over again." Yup. Sure is. Oh. Yeah. Listen, we get it, you're angry, but why do you have to, why do you gotta be so angry about it? We get it, there's unfairness, but like, can't you just talk it out with the white guys? Just... Why you gotta listen. be so abrasive? 
Why are you guys so wild? That's all I want to know is. <laughs> Thomas says he's actually writing a book that uses these themes. Wait, which themes? <laughs> That's, we should clarify what themes. These ones. Uh, Set fire to the ghost. Listen, there's a lot of themes this game is playing with. And... <laughs> Many Step of them could have used some consultants. Yes, absolutely. It's Absolutely. important to always put your face directly over a fire that you're lighting. <laughs> That's how you make sure it's warm. Like, oh, I can feel it on my face. My face skin is real sensitive. Find a stick. There's a pile of sticks right there. It's a ranch, so we keep a pile of sticks propped up against the side of the building all the time. <laughs> Here we go. Wait, this is all you needed Wait, to do in the grandma uh, news? It's, it's the Blair Witch, it's X. It's X. Yeah. It's the Blair Witch. Uh, I, thought, I thought so. This is all you needed to do to fix it, and grandma knew that this is what it would take to fix it the entire time, and she just sat there on her ass and her they fucking needed, chair they needed the, They needed the power of a white person, pure of heart. <laughs> yep. Pure of heart and skin. And skin. <laughs> Uh, Bebo says, the weirdest thing ever, Xenoclash 1 and 2 may be the best representation of native culture, uh, those South American natives being effused, infused effectively in a game. Yeah, no, totally, I can see that. Heard and, good things and about that's, that, yeah. And Xenoclash 1 and 2 are made by a South American like, development team. Um, that's definitely one of the things I like about that game, is those games are that they are very, they're a style that nobody else is doing. Those games are super cool. Actually, uh, I even know, though, even though Xenoclash 2 is kind of I mean, like, I have no idea how they are gameplay-wise, but just, like, stylistically, yeah, totally. they're amazing. Mm -hmm. Nobody else is doing anything even remotely like that. Yeah, absolutely. I like that studio a lot. I think those guys have a lot of, uh, a lot of cool ideas and a lot of potential. They started out making Doom mods. Really? Wow. Yeah. And then they went into doing full-on games. It's pretty cool. We need a fifth soul to complete the ritual! I wonder where this fifth soul is going to come from. Soul. The dog? The horse? The horse. Beyond five souls. Get, get Aiden out there. Just do it. You yep. know you're gonna. Of course. Great. It's good that she just knows this incantation. Yep. Oh, they couldn't do it because they didn't have a fifth person at the farm, I guess. That's so. They had that extra bedroom. They had the old guy. Or, oh, right, that would just replace that <sighs> one. I don't. I don't. Know. Also, maybe she should have had another kid. Jody you did, did it. it. Jody, Jody did, did it. it. Jody saved us. No, this isn't just like the native trope shit too, but there's also this gendered like witch woman thing that's happening. So yeah. like, uh, just there's, uh, there's so many layers. Mm -hmm. This could have been really neat too. Yeah, no, there's definitely a premise here that I'm interested in. I'm not saying you can't, you can't. Oh boy. I kind of, I, I kind of liked. Uh, you know, it was a very, also had a very. I never, I actually never played it. I just, I'm, uh, I'm surprised you never streamed Prey. Like, after, uh, after she was I, I gone. Played it, and, I played it years ago, is the problem. It's, uh, it's not the kind of game that I would ever replay, even though I just, like, uh, Can I, can I also maybe. just say that I'm, I'm the angriest person in the world about Prey 2 not being a thing? Not being the thing it looked like it was gonna be? I mean, I'm so sure those. Cool. I'm sure those people who lost their jobs are more angry <laughs> than I am, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty angry. I mean, I think, I think, you know, my suspicion is, yeah. Prey Two will still happen in a form mm -hmm. somewhat similar to what it is. I hope um, with, you know, potentially a space direction change and a different, maybe different team behind it. But uh, if it's not space cyberpunk bounty hunting, it's like, what am I even? I mean, doing? I think that's what it will still probably be. I hope so. Um, what a weird thing, though. Like, why even? You know, like, did the Prey name have enough cachet no. that they even wanted to? I don't, I don't, I don't, Dude, I don't. hey, your grandma's, like, dead, and you're running to the strange girl first. She's real pretty, though. Y'all, I figured out what this is. 
Okay. This is an an idea for an entire game that David Cage wanted to make. Yes. Act, act one yeah, says sure. we yeah. have. A, act one says we have an awesome chat. Yeah. Thank you. You are correct, and uh, thank all of you for uh, for being cool, chat. I like you guys. It's nice that we have a group of people who we can have this conversation actively mm -hmm. with them. And so now Ellen Page inherits the throne and is the new grandma. No, no white, no white man. man's ever been to the place that we're going. But she's a white woman. Yeah, You're special. Yeah. But yeah, this this was going insane. to be an entire. This seems like it was like David Cage had this cool idea for a game set in the desert, and there was like a sand monster and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But instead, he decided to make it a level in this game. It's insane to me that this is the same game that had that that really touching stuff with the homeless people. Mm -hmm. Shaded Fox wants to know, Austin, what was the cyberpunk game you were plugging a while back? Free cyberpunk game you were plugging? Probably Data Jack if it was free. Okay. Um, I'll link it in chat. Um, I still yeah, want to do stream. Thirty-five says but... Ellen Page is the last Navajo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Great. Yep. I thought that would be the end of this this section, but it's still going on. <laughs> so I love it when you reach a moment in anything where it's just like it just hits you and your immediate thought is shouldn't this be over? Yeah. Like, Maybe like, this is when the next sexual like assault scene times, starts. Like four different times in Okami. No, I think I think we're done with sexual assault or scenes now. I would hope. I don't know. Somebody said there was like four of them or something. Yeah, I I heard Oh, I thought there were only like two. Jesus Christ. I don't know. I could be I could Okay, I remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's all... let's not. We'll we'll find out. Right. Together. <laughs> As a family. <laughs> Act one says it feels like Cage literally had three different games in development: normal game, CIA game, and reservation game. Yeah, totally. No, absolutely. Like, there's a. I can see that. A lot of different ideas here that don't seem to blend together really well. Even, I, I will say, uh, you know, like I said last time, Justin McElroy reviewed this for Polygon and liked it more than I would say I'm liking it right now. This is a really uh, McElroy game. Sure. But he, he did say, like, even he in his, you know, relatively positive review said, you know, it's, it's kind of inconsistent. There's kind of like, it leaps around between scenes in a way that doesn't always make sense. Right. Yeah, um, Justin McElroy, along with Kirk Hamilton... Um, Joy and Patrick Klepik and Alex Navarro on a, like a Beyond Spoiler cast over on Giant Bomb. It's definitely worth a listen. Sure. This Justin. also feels like one of those games where when you're trying to finish it as fast as possible, there could be sort of an emotional exhaustion aspect to it at the end where like you feel really impacted, but then like three weeks later you're like, oh, that was kind of... Mm. Maybe. Mm. I... I would say, like, and, you know, this is something that I always have to watch out for when I'm reviewing and try to avoid. Yeah. I, I think more common when you're reviewing and when you play through, especially something really narrative-heavy in a short amount of time, that emotional exhaustion stuff is more common to make me like a game less. Me too. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, I mean, that's exactly what happened with Last of Us for me this year. Is <laughs> For for me, it, it makes me kind of overlook a lot of things that the more I sit on them, bother Ooh. me which is what happened with brothers for me i think like i came out of brothers having problems with it but still thinking it was really really amazing and then like within a week i still think brothers is my really, opinion really amazing. had changed i still think I, it's it, super amazing i think it's you know it does a lot of cool things the thing with this brothers is, uh... that's interesting god i was going to say this is how that's pretty much my experience with pacific rim like, I thought it was really great whenever I saw it, and then... Pacific Rim, the, the video game. Right. Uh, <laughs> the more... I, the further away from it, from my viewing experience of that uh, home release video game that I got, uh, the less <laughs> I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. cool. The thing with Brothers... Dude, thanks for... Two is that, like, a lot of the cool stuff was... I mean, this is this is one of the problems with, uh, or one of the things you have to be conscious with when reviewing or writing about a game too is the parts that I think Janine and I both have have problems with hammered home the hardest in the last moments of that game, and the stuff that I think that she liked and that I know I liked about that game happened throughout, but didn't happen as much at the very end. And so there was always this fear of like the last 
hour of a game or the last you know 10 percent of a game kind of uh dominating my my experience overall mm-hmm. um, so i try to be critical about that myself um, but it is it is sometimes hard to shake that last impression that the game made on you the first and then the last you know i think brothers is super good i still think brothers is super good but i also think it's super problematic like i think that that's that's how yeah. I am about and things. And you can feel both things. Like, I, I'm i not the kind of person who... I, I was thinking about this earlier today. Like, it's possible for a thing to ruin a game for you, but it's also possible to like a game in spite of a thing that maybe ruined the game for someone else. Like, sure. and well, still acknowledge I, uh, that that's an icky thing that's that you That's something that I like. appreciate about you guys. I mean, I will say, like, there, we've seen the discussion pop up a bunch of times, but it popped up yet again today of, like, uh, Bioshock people, people being upset yeah. about Bioshock Infinite, which is totally, you know, whatever. I understand where that's coming from. I think there's been some really interesting, great discussion about it. But there are there are a lot of people who their point of view on it is is if you don't uh, see the things that I see as problematic in Bioshock Infinite, and also there therefore hate the game, then mm-hmm. like, I think your opinion is worthless and bullshit. Right. And like I okay, feel like what, that's going too far. What's this cave drawing? Right. It's a Pokemon. Or, or yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's the Blair Witchia. It looks like Aku from Samurai Jack. <laughs> Aku from Samurai Jack, the new Pokemon DLC. Um, to be fair, there is also I just want to make sure we you know we're we're even handed in this, which is that there are also the people who say straight up there isn't anything worth ha- there isn't a discussion worth having here. It's just a game. The end. Like, and those people are also the fucking worst. Like, I think that there is a way to have. Jeannie and I have had this conversation a dozen times because we've both been critical of games like Bioshock Infinite, games that we like a lot of and then also have these like issues with and it's always hard to hit that right tone where you want to zoom in on the thing that you think is problematic and see how it fits inside of the larger whole of both the game and games in general and society in general without Uh, without cutting it too much slack at the same time one thing to because we're not talking about the game and this is probably worth pointing out Tovo points us out that drawing that we just saw that's the part where we learned that Jody was prophesized by the Native Americans to save them from their own mistakes so it that is literally was of Jody. That was Jody. It is literally Far Cry Three. Cool. Oh, I kind of interpreted it as like they had a concept of the thing she was. That she just happened to stumble upon. His his explanation makes a little more sense though. Is she gonna hit that before she leaves? Do you think? B-boy that other one's really attractive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. B-boy says awesome. I like Manhunt. I hate that I do, but I've never beat it. But there's something about it that is I don't know insane. Yeah. No, I get that. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's how I feel about Hotline Miami right now. It's like I have a really hard time. Kiss him. Kiss him. <laughs> Phil hugged him. He's a cutie. You should probably keep yeah. that keep that number though. Yeah. Oh, it's a I good nuzzle. <laughs> that nuzzle. Why don't you wow. kiss him instead of saving his family to death? What? what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you called it. You did get a motorcycle. Yeah, of course. But yeah, no, no, Austin. Obviously, I, I agree with you though that like the people yeah. who are like, there's no discussion worth having are, are the fucking yeah. worst. I think but I also I it. also don't like like I also get really I frustrated and, and annoyed with the people who are like, if you don't see this and and completely yeah. hate the game because of it, then like you are a racist piece I, of shit or you are like just wrong and not worth talking. You to. Can, I actually you I didn't the seat off first. <laughs> I think it's rust. I don't think that's. Um, I actually it's talked with the guy who wrote her. that piece today, Jeff. Which, which uh, one? Oh, Jeff's, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, is, which is, I think, in that category uh, of things. See, yeah, absolutely. See. Um, and it's like that scene at the end of The Return Wait, of the Jedi. That... Oh. What? That was okay, kind we're of confusing. Okay, we're switching scenes finally, and now we're back. Separation. They weren't the even, like, part. shiny and blue or anything. No, before the CIA yeah. part, right before the CIA, after the condenser. Okay. okay. Where is okay. this in relation to the prologue? Well before everything we've seen is before the prologue. Oh, she has a nice, nice again. brain hat. Yeah, no, that's her uh, Jedi mind training thing. Jay you can Fabulous buy those at ThinkGeek. J Fabulous brings up an important point. He says, "Guys, why can't games be about fun? Why you guys got to take so serious?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I hate that shit. God. Uh, so it, wait, you talked to Jeff about. So that? talked to Jeff it's about it. Bioshock about that piece. article. Yeah, and you know, he actually came to me and said, "Listen, Austin." He and I talk occasionally, right? We talk on, on Twitter, and he was on my syndicate stream a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was like, hey, do you think I went over the line here? Do you think I said anything that was, like, too inflammatory? Like, And I said, well, what, what are you trying to do with this thing? Like, what are you, what are you, 
And he said, well, I quote all these pieces that I think are, are more subtle than I am and that are more, um, they're probably better, he thinks that they're better pieces. He thinks that they're really well-written pieces. But no one's reading those pieces because those people are really subtle and quiet. And his whole thing, and I'm not, this isn't me, this isn't how I do. Oh, right? Willem Dafoe is like, a daughter. I'm going to, mm. fuck, is this just going to last of us, us? Great. Um, but, like, he wants to have this, he was being inflammatory for the sake of being inflammatory, which I don't know is always useful. Um, but I also want to reserve that right for certain occasions when I think it is important to be rhetorically louder than what you actually believe to get attention. I don't know that Bioshock Infinite Game of the Year discussion is that, yeah. um, but there are cert- but there are certainly. But if you feel that way, it's tough, man. It's just tough to to walk the line. Well, I guess what I'm saying is he recognizes that that in that specific instance. Sure that what he was doing was... Sure, and you know, I, don't, I also don't want to be, you know, I don't want to uh, yeah. pa- pause briefly here just to bring up a <laughs> serious point before I get distracted by the game. Sure. I, I also don't want to be like the, like, you know, the people who are like, uh, when somebody on the, like, somebody, like, let's say, uh, like a prominent feminist blogger tweets something about men. Sure, um, sure. Just as a, as a generalization, like, just as a toss that out thing. There. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then a bunch of people respond with like, well, hold on, not all men are like that. Right, um, you right. know, I don't. I don't want to be that guy and be like, "Well, not everybody who likes Bioshock Infinite is like that." Mm-hmm. But, but yeah. not everybody who likes Bioshock Infinite is like that. Nathan, yeah, named absolutely. Ryan. But I am. Um, you, you, you were just like that. Yep, um, and proud. Mm-hmm. I get Speaking around of... all this by just not having opinions. <laughs> Speaking of Bioshock uh, Infinite, Agent Bioshock of Infinite. Agent this of guy's chaos. dead, right? This guy's daughter's dead. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Agent yeah. of Chaos says, I'm starting to think that prologue has a different definition in French than it does in English. <laughs> yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah, prologue actually means rising action. I'm just, okay, we're, <laughs> we're to an actual different scene now, so like maybe things will pick up again. This is... This is Jody See, look at her hair. I'm into this a, less. She was after... This is after she was a punk rocker. Opa! <laughs> <laughs> yep. Is she just sitting at this computer? Can she do this? She's Gotta gonna learn to hack. Internet. This is the part where she learns to hack. Oh man. Yeah. Is this where we fight the internet? Maybe Opa will finally notice her. <laughs> Act one and B-Boy Zilla. B-Boy Zilla are mentioning that the voice actor for the black dude in this scene uh, is Dwayne Wayne from a different world. True story. And that's the second old black sitcom actor who has shown up in a game this year. Uh, the first is a uh, male voice two in Saints Row, uh, Saints Row 4, is the kid who played music a lot on The Parenthood, whose name I forget. Uh, so, you know, Steve Harvey fans out there know. Oh, guys, this is the origin story of how he joined the CIA. Oh, shit. Ryan's going to take care of you from now on. Oh, her hair works here for me. He kind of looks like a white version of that other guy. Models are very hard to do. <laughs> all right. Clearly. All, people look alike. <laughs> all attractive true. men have the same face. That's all right. Yeah. And that face is Phil's. Mm-hmm. I love you, baby. And that face is Sammy's. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that face is that guy with the bow tie. I can make my own decisions. No one can force me to go. Yeah. Tony, I know. It's difficult, but you need to understand this is a great opportunity for you dude of brown says i like bioshock infinite because i like troy baker so much and it had the vanguard charge for mass effect once i realized i could just play vanguard in bioshock infinite i loved it joseph kitty says okay i've had my fill of mr cage for quite some time i'll return when princess phil does that's totally fair uh what are we what are we gonna do that should we do that like friday or something friday's no good for me not good not good um, um, s- the Saturday might work for me. Saturday I mean, might work. Oh wait, wait, wait! I might be getting this wrong. Saturday night might theoretically yeah, work. Okay. Sunday will definitely work. I'm in commute between <laughs> uh, Thursday late night and Saturday, basically. Digital Eric says, "Is this game a sim of what happens to people that get put into the diversity lounge?" <laughs> yes. White guys yell at you. <laughs> They just want to understand you. Head advice points out, so far, not a lot of actual yeah, lounging. All I want you to do is explain. Hardcore. All you have to do is explain. Yeah, you know, It'll be fine. 
You don't know what we're doing over here. Just tell them why you're upset. <laughs> they could buy us some new jeans point, at least. Uh, MM Gant says at this point, Jody might might as well become a princess at some point. Right. This is actually a prequel along with the Queen. <laughs>